by the time 1995 rolled around, I had two Charles Dickens productions. I had Great Expectations and A Christmas Carol. And I was presenting them both as one-man shows where I portrayed Charles Dickens as the storyteller. And he would not only bring the characters to life, he would also move the, the sets around and the props around and, and to, to a certain extent interact with the, uh, the marionettes. But he, he was more hovering over the story the way you feel he's doing when you read a Charles Dickens novel. He sort of hovers over his story and comments on it. And I, I was really intrigued with that idea, but I kind of wanted to have a trilogy of, uh, of Dickens shows, and I was considering which should be the third and, and final project, and I thought about David Copperfield, I thought very seriously about the old curiosity shop, and then one night my wife and I saw a production of the musical Oliver. At the end of the story, or the end of the production, uh, Fagin and the Artful Dodger walk off into the sunset together. They dance off into the sunset. And I just, it really struck me that this was totally counter to what uh, Charles Dickens was trying to communicate in his book, this contrast of good and evil and this, this, this battleground. And that's really what we have in Oliver Twist. And um, so when I set about to do my production, I wanted to uphold this theme, and puppetry uh, exaggerates and presents ideas like this so well because everything is exaggerated and larger than life, very much the way you feel about um, Dickens' characters when, when you read them there. Uh, marionettes can do things that live actors can't do, that uh, uh, film cannot do, just with their, uh, their presence on stage. I did have to whittle the cast down quite a bit. There are some other wonderful characters in the novel that I could not include because I was aiming for about an hour and a half long production and uh, you know not a three or four hour miniseries. So I, I really needed to, to really bring it down to its essence. So in a sense, my production of Oliver Twist is sort of um, uh, a fairy tale. <laughs> Fagin. This is my new friend, Oliver Twist. Oh, we are very glad to see you, Oliver, very. I hope I shall have the honor of your intimate acquaintance. Uh, Dickens is creating a portrait of innocence with his character of Oliver Twist, and then surrounding him with all these portraits of very colorful evil that are are basically uh, trying to uh, pull him over to the other side. Their world of, of, of uh, robbery and, and um, oh, th just a number of things that are going on in London. And, and, and Dickens, he took a lot of walks uh, when he was writing his stories and he, he would take these, these alleyways and, and go and really observe what was going on. Um, you know, after midnight in London and he was a, a keen observer of, of these things and he was able to, to, uh, to put them on paper and exaggerate them and uh, make them very potent. And his readers were shocked. And um, if, if we're wise, we're still shocked by some of the things he talks about. As far as, as having Fagin be just a, a slightly wayward old man who's just kind of taken the wrong road, this is not what um, Dickens intended. Uh, he actually says in the story, basically, Fagin is a portrait of the devil. And uh, so I wanted to uphold that and, and contrast that with, um, with the, the very strong um, good elements in the story of which Oliver Twist is the centerpiece. Nancy, come in here. What's you stopping outside as if you was ashamed of me? Come in here, girl. Oh, I'm not ashamed of your love. I never could be. I was looking for the boy, the new one, Fagin. Where's little Oliver? Uh, a character that kind of stands in the crux between good and evil is really one of my favorite characters in the story, and that's Nancy, because uh, 
She has had a life of uh, prostitution and, uh, and thievery, and she's been, been pulled to the evil side, yet to her, Oliver Twist is everything that she wishes she could be and everything that she is really actually drawn to. And she's pulled between the two worlds. And it's a brilliant portrait by Charles Dickens and a brutal one because uh, there are things she doesn't want to give up, yet she wants to help Oliver. She, in a way, is kind of who we all are being pulled. You know, uh, Fagin is such a portrait of darkness. Oliver Twist is such a portrait of innocence and purity. And we are somewhere in the middle, and Nancy's the one that personifies that and makes that really work on stage and certainly in the story with, with um, when you read Dickens' book. The workhouse inmates were unwittingly being overfed. We are the fellows to set this right, said the board, and indeed they were. The waterworks were immediately contracted to lay on an unlimited supply of water. The corn factor's contract was reduced to supplying a very small quantity of oatmeal. Three meals of thin gruel were then issued every day with an onion twice a week. Oliver and the other workhouse inmates suffered the tortures of slow starvation for three months. When Charles Dickens wrote his story, um, the situation with workhouses in England was at an all-time low. It was, it was filled with corruption, and Dickens observed this. He was very critical of it, and he felt he had a tool with his uh, storytelling ability to not only bring awareness but conviction. Dickens just points his finger in his brilliant, exaggerated writing and really opened the eyes of Victorian England to what was going on. They were shocked and horrified and uh, it, it stirred things up. It got people talking, it got people uh, thinking about how it was being operated. and. Uh, you know, it was a very, um, it's very direct to what Dickens was trying to do. And I certainly try to bring that out in my marionette show too. I'm thankful that, you know, the larger themes are always right, right there alongside this because, you know, we, we have a lot of social issues now and, and they, they, they reflect some of the same things that, that Dickens was, um, was trying to talk about uh, when he wrote his book a long time ago.